There aren't many science celebrities, but sometimes somebody working in science has so much personality and charisma and makes such an impact that when they pass away, people are left distraught. In this episode's profile, we meet someone who's made major contributions to our effort to understand the animal mind and whose unexpected passing has left a hole in the field of animal studies. On September 6, 2007, Alex died. I don't know if it's a good analogy, but when Michael Jackson died, many, many people felt a deep loss. It was the same when Alex died. For me, it was actually worse. I guess I could compare Alex to Albert Einstein. I read about Alex's passing in The Economist. There's a page at the end, one obituary, and it's, it's only when somebody, like, really big dies, like somebody who changed the world in some way. And it was Alex the week that he died. The outpouring, boxes and boxes and boxes of letters, thousands of emails. Alex was a parrot. Alex, what toy? Nail. Nail, that's right, you're a good birdie. How many? And arguably the most famous bird in the world. Good parent, good boy, one, two. This is the story of his owner, Dr. Irene Pepperberg. You be good, you be good. A rebel scientist whose amazing relationship with Alex Bye. Bye. showed that parrots were not only smart, but their mental skills could actually rival young children. I love you. I love you too, bye. When people were saying, no, 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 birds can't do this, and I went, but birds can talk. I know they can talk, and they're smart. Good boy. What shape? Four corner. Good boy. So when I said, that, oh, a parrot's going to do this with a brain the size of a shelled walnut, the first grant proposal came back asking me what I was smoking. Growing up in 1950s Brooklyn, Irene initially set out to study chemistry, first at MIT and then as a graduate student at Harvard. But in 1974, halfway through her PhD, a new television series changed everything. Nova. Each week, a science adventure. Say rock. Rock, say rock. Good boy. And so there was this ape using sign language, clearly not at the same level as an adult human, but we were communicating with another species. It was this the Dr. Doolittle moment. With her PhD in hand, Irene turned her back on chemistry and set out to begin a career in biology at Purdue University. Her first stop, the pet store. I had the fellow working with the birds choose one. That way nobody could argue that there was anything special about the bird that I chose. He was just one bird in a cage. That was my first introduction to Alex. Irene began teaching Alex the names of different objects. What is it? What's here? But it didn't always go smoothly. Unfortunately, the thing that he liked the best was paper. And P without lips is really tough. What is it? So for a very long time, we had A-R, A-R. And some mornings, he'd work really well. Some days, he was in a bad mood. And me and Dr. Perberg could tell because he would give you the look. That's what we called it, the look. He would like turn his head and stare at you and look at you. And it's like, oh no, he's not going to work today. If he asked for a banana and you gave him a grape, he'd just toss it at you and go, I want banana. As though, you know, how could you not understand him? Want to try again? Nice and clear? Training Alex didn't come cheap. How many? And Irene's time was consumed by writing grant after grant. Grant writing is an art. And you learn that art by getting a lot of grants rejected. You propose something that's sort of unusual. There's a lot of skepticism out there because people don't know if you're brilliant or if you're crazy. 
In September 79, the first grant came through. Irene had to design a study that could prove what, if anything, Alex was thinking. How many corners? She developed a training method for Alex that she called the model rival technique. So we had the object the bird wanted. I showed it to the student who was the model for the bird's behavior. It's rival for my attention. I'd say, what's this? Three. Three. Good Three. Good. Three. Good. You're right. And she'd scratch herself the way the bird would. And the bird, of course, would be really, really interested. And we'd play that same game back and forth. And then we'd show it to the bird. What shape? What shape? Quack. Good birdie. How many? Quack. Good boy. Good parent. Irene and Alex worked a grueling schedule of 8 to 12 hours each day. Yeah. Right, good boy. But he embraced the perks of a full support staff and a steady stream of fresh fruits and vegetables. All organic, of course. What made him special was those first 15 years or so of being an only bird and being the center of everyone's attention and being treated like a toddler. What do you want? You want a nut? You can have a nice big nut. He was very inquisitive in that he, you know, if something came into the lab, he'd ask you, you know, what color? What color? What shape? What's that? Orange. Orange, good birdie. Now that she could communicate with Alex, she performed study after study to test his intelligence. The next breakthrough was on concepts of same and different. And this was something that really people thought that only children and that maybe apes could do. I could show him a number of different objects and ask lots of lots of questions about them. Can you tell me what's different? Color. All right. Can you tell me what's same? Shape. Good boy. What color bigger? You know, what color bigger? Good boy. Good boy. When you think about some of the tasks that Alex did, they were all built on something an animal had to have in the wild. Can they recognize same indifference? Well, they have to recognize this is the same type of berry that I ate last time that was really good. That is part of the animal's basic abilities that they have to have in order to survive. In 2002, Irene and Alex moved to Brandeis University and she continued gathering evidence. How many corners? Trying to prove that Alex understood what he was saying. What Alex does that's different from Paradig is that he recombines his symbols. For instance, someone brought birthday cake into the lab, and Alex knew the word for bread, and he knew the word yummy, and he tasted the birthday cake, and he said, yummy bread. This is a parrot. How amazing is that? And it was that moment of realizing that, yes, you know, my hunch as to what he could do was correct. And that moment of knowing something that, you know, nobody else knew, just for that moment, that we had succeeded. We had this piece of information that we could then share with the rest of the world. It was really exciting. By 2007, Alex could count to eight. What color number bigger? Orange. Orange is right. Good boy. Do simple math. What is it? You tell me. And he knew over a hundred words. Water. Oh, well, yeah, it has water in it. Right. What's it called? Show up. Right. So we were able to show that on the types of tasks you give a child, okay, not particularly on language, but on cognitive processing, on number tasks, and, you know, shape questions and things like that, that Alex was at the level of about a five or six-year-old child. Alex and Irene had become stars with an international following. And at 31, almost half the average life expectancy of an African gray, he had just begun to tap its potential. Irene was starting even more advanced tests, spatial relationships and response to optical illusions. be good. Bye. Bye. Alex and I had a good night routine that we used every night. I love you. I love you too. Bye. We walked out the door fully expecting the next day to be just like any other day. But it wasn't. I got a call from Irene. As soon as I heard her voice, I knew something had happened.
And I said, what happened? And she said, I just found out Alex died. And I just froze. And that's when the phone calls kept coming in. Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? I was in shock. Alex was just so special. It was like this emptiness. Everybody was known to see Alex and her together. Now it's, there's not Alex. I lost my closest collaborator, my closest colleague. And it was like losing a child, like losing a spouse. I mean, it was just this huge hole. Because for 30 years, Alex was the center of my life. Today, Irene keeps her memories of Alex, including his ashes nearby. But she's also looking to the future and continuing to work with two younger birds. How many? One. Oh, that was a very good one. Here's one corner. Here's one corner. Good birdie. Now, what shape is this? What shape? And her fight for acceptance and funding continues. Irene's always on the road trying to raise money. And it was only at the last six months or so of Alex. Trying to write grants, trying to get donations. Alex has helped us recognize that animal intelligence is a continuum so that these creatures that look so different from us are doing the same kinds of intelligent behavior that we are. People now should look at the term bird brain as, as a compliment. 